Hi, and welcome back to Field Engineering. Uh, another great episode for you. I am your host, J.D. Brake. With me again is the amazing Phil Kimball. J.D. How are you doing, Phil? Just fine. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk to you about an interesting subject. Now, I know zoning sometimes can be intimidating, and one of the things we do best here at Jackson is to really coach and train you guys to be comfortable uh, when you walk into a zoning scenario. And uh, we've got some zone panels here set up. We've got a Honeywell zone panel and uh, an IO uh, ESP zone panel, which I'm sure we'll probably do a video on later on. But so we're going to talk about how you wire thermostats in conjunction with a zone panel and make sure everything's communi communicating correctly. And uh, we've got a fully functioning zoning system. So we've already set up uh, the thermostats here on each zone panel for like what type of equipment, how many zones, all that fun stuff, all the wiring, which was a blast. <laughs> um, but once we get these thermostats wired, Phil, what is a technician um, supposed to look for to make sure we get these zoning boards set up properly? Well, let's start from square one, J.D. First okay. of all, um, thermostats today, most of them are universal. Mm -hmm. And that means that you need to configure the thermostat with regards to the type of equipment right. that you're using. Uh, conventional heating cooling equipment, gas electric, could be an electric furnace, it could be a heat pump, it mm -hmm. could be dual fuel, a fossil fuel type application where you have a heat pump with a gas furnace. Right. But you configure that through the thermostat. That's important. The other thing is, is that on most zone control systems, um, especially on the newer models today, they're universal. Mm -hmm. So the zoning system itself can be configured for heat pump or conventional heat cool. Right. Once the thermostat matches the HVAC application, in other okay. words, this is set up right now for conventional gas electric. The board is set up for gas electric, mm -hmm. and we're going to wire to a gas furnace and an outdoor air conditioning unit. Um, that's the important thing. Running wire. We're not talking about one thermostat going to the equipment anymore. We're talking about multiple thermostats, three, four, six. Yeah. Uh, it's important that you tag your wires. You're running everything back to these panels. It's called home run wiring. And I really w need to, you know, uh, uh, be assured that if this is zone one thermostat, that the output to the zone damper is the damper that is serving that zone, in mm -hmm. other words, allowing the air to go into the zone or restricting the airflow into the zone. If you get your wires crossed, some weird things are going to happen. <laughs> in other words, zone one will be calling and all of a sudden zone two damper will be open. Yep. And then they say your boards don't work. They're, they're, they're not working properly. It's all in the wiring. So tag the wires. Know what the zone damper is in relationship to the thermostat that's controlling that zone. Tag them. Uh, makes it easier, not only for the install, but if the, you or the service tech has to come out there and try to troubleshoot the job because it's not functioning properly, tagged wires really uh, save a lot of time. Right. So right now, we have this thermostat. I believe it's, it's calling. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice Nest thermostat. Wi-Fi stats. They and work uh, we have it calling for heating, and that's confirmed. Basically, the thermostat says it's calling for heating. Mm -hmm. um, we have an input from that thermostat that our board here is telling us that that's zone one. We use LED indications. Mm -hmm. Honeywell does the same thing. In other words, you know what's going on at the panel based on the input from right. the thermostat. Right. Um, it's saying it's calling for heat. Um, but then the tech says, yeah, but the furnace isn't running. Well, a couple things. Remember, guys, those great diagnostic tools, the multimeter. Multimeter. I I just need to set this multimeter to AC voltage because we're using AC voltage to right. power the thermostat. I'm hold this up here. And even if the thermostat's battery power doesn't matter because I can now go, if there is a heating signal taking place, I can go across the 24 volt common terminal on that zone and I can go to W1. And what do I got there? 28 volts. 28 volts. That means that that thermostat is sending that signal back to this panel. Now, 
We've got, we know we've got an input. Okay. The panel is telling us that we've, uh, it's received that call. It has energized the output to the equipment. Right. Well, we're not using the equipment transformer to power the panel or the thermostats or even the zone dampers. Um, we use a separate transformer. So all we are over here, again, is a switch. Mm -hmm. So remember when we talked about uh, continuity? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if we uh, measure across uh, these probes, just right. touch them together, we get tone. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we want to do. So okay. we set this to tone. It's got that radio wave. Yeah, I got there, that yeah. radio wave. Hear that yep. thing beeping? It's Morse code, I think. So if I go over to the other side of the board, and you'll have to excuse me for reaching <coughs> over here. So if I go to hot, and I go to W1... There it is. That relay is made. Okay. Got a tone. So that tells us that the output from the panel to the equipment is proper. <coughs> now where is the problem? The problem now can be diagnosed either with regards to wire mm -hmm. or at the equipment itself. Right. The, in, the other important thing is everything's fuse protected. So if I didn't hear that tone across hot and the W, uh, first thing I want to do is check my fuses. Right. And on this board, we have both an RH and RC fuse. On other panels, they, they're fuse protected as well. Um, but that's important because it could be something as simple as a fuse that's right. not allowing the output to the equipment. Um, Honeywell, on their panels, you can do the same thing. They use uh, these really cool uh, quick connect uh, terminal blocks. Well, it's hard to get a probe in there. Uh, so, if I were going to test a, a Honeywell panel, same thing. I think we need to make this thing call for heating, JD. Or okay. it is. Uh, they have these little pads, and they're really cool because I can go across these pads and measure voltage, and I can confirm that the thermostat is inputting. Um, right the call to the panel. And the same thing goes with the outputs. I can check the HVAC equipment outputs, go ahead and go to tone, and go across R and W. Right. If I get tone, I know it's outputting. The relay's made, and then from there we have to go to the equipment or run the wire that runs to the equipment. Uh, a lot of times you might have a cracked wire. Even new thermostat cable can be broken. It's amazing. Or someone shot a staple in it when they were pulling the wire. <laughs> Um, it's easy to find that out because if we're not getting the input here, then uh, it's either wire or it could be the thermostat configuration or it could even be the way it's wired to the uh, sub base of the thermostat. Right. All thermostats are a little different, but it's easy to diagnose these things because if I'm getting, if I'm not getting the input here, then I can go to the other side. I can take the thermostat off the sub base and use that handy jumping wire that we use, <laughs> that little jumper wire, right. and take the thermostat out of the loop first. Okay. Everything's wired to the sub base, and now I want to see why am I not getting my heating signal because the thermostat says it's calling. Hmm. Take the thermostat off the sub base, take your jumper wire, and go across R and W. Okay. That's a switch. Right. And now if we output here at the board, we know it's a thermostat issue. If it doesn't, it's a wire issue. Wow. That's simple. Sounds so it's very simple. easy to diagnose inputs and outputs uh, it, on these panels. Uh, doesn't matter whose thermostat it is. Like mm -hmm. I said, if it's battery powered, uh, that's fine. If it's hardwired with 24 volt power to it, that's fine. But very simple through the process of elimination to determine where the problem is. Here, right. wire, or there. That's awesome. Now, Phil. One last question. When you get a tech call from one of our contractors, what is the most common obstacle or, um, I guess, misconception that you encounter when they're setting up a zoning system? Like, is there what's that first hurdle that they got to overcome that you hear the most? First of all, understanding that the outputs of the equipment are dry contacts. There's no voltage over here. Um, the other thing is, when techs call me, they talk about color. 
wire color. Hmm. I'm on the phone. I'm colorblind. <laughs> I'm not seeing those colors. Unless you have the free Jackson Systems app, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. we got that. You can use that. And now we can see. Uh, don't talk colors to me. Don't talk <laughs> about the blue wire, the white wire, the red wire, the yellow wire, because uh, not all thermostat wire is the same. It's true. Uh, true. There are some industry standards. We talk about the G wire, which is green, green etc. Don't talk yeah. about it. Talk about terminals. Terminals, I know, terminals represent where the wire should be. So it doesn't matter if the, you got a blue wire on a G terminal as long right. as it's blue on the yep. other side at the thermostat. So uh, wire color can be very confusing, and mm -hmm. you can't make assumptions with regards to wire color. It's nice that it is color-coded because if you're running eight wires <laughs> back to a the thermostat, they're yep. all black. It makes it a little difficult to decide which one goes where. But talk about terminals, and then... Uh, I can see that in my mind. I don't need to look at colors because I can't see them over the phone. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Uh, that's that's probably uh, uh, one of the biggest things. Awesome. Well, again, you can absolutely call us anytime if you do have questions setting up a zoning system or anything else in between. Talk to very qualified people like Phil Kimball. Uh, please reach out to us at 888-652-9663. Or check us out on our website, www.jacksonsystems.com. Our email address, too, which we get if you have a question for whatever reason, email is the best way, info at jacksonsystems.com. Phil, thank you again for joining welcome, us JD. on Field Engineering. Appreciate it. I've been your host, J.D. Brake. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to smack that like button below. And if you want notifications on brand new videos that are coming out tailored just for you, be sure to subscribe right here to the Jackson Systems YouTube channel. Now, if there's some videos you missed, you can always check it out right here. Go ahead and click subscribe. Other videos, like, do it.